Colossians, the third chapter, and I want us to, to look at just two verses tonight, Colossians 3, verses 16 and, and 17. And uh, as you know, I'm always in the habit of, uh, of giving titles to my message, and so tonight I'm going to talk about when God's Word dwells in you. And uh, these two verses just, just jumped out, as I was thinking about that. Uh, Colossians, the um, third chapter, verse 16 and 17. It says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us to this time, to this point, and to this place. And we open your word tonight. We, we pray that it will speak to our hearts, Father, and we, we need and when we go out that others will see Jesus in us. In his name we thank you. Amen and amen. Yeah. You know, several years ago, the editor of a well-known newspaper over in, in London, he, uh, he sent a letter, a letter, I guess you'd call it a letter of inquiry, to uh, 100 in, important men in London. And he asked them a question. He said, suppose you were sent to prison for three years. And you go there for three years, and all you could take with you was your clothes and three books. Which three would you take? And he, then he asked them, he said, please state them in order of their importance. And when he got all 100 replies back, he said that, 98 of the 100 people put the Bible as the number one book. You know, we, we know the Bible has always been the best summer every, every year, but it's always on the best summer list. And the readers of the Bible have, have discovered that it's not just a book of the month. You know, it, it's the book of life. Eternal, it's unchanging, it's ever dependable. And there's no reason then for surprise uh, that the Apostle Paul told the Colossian Christians to do this, to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Now, when, when he said that, the word of Christ could refer to Christ as the living word, because that's what the Bible is. It is a living word. And as we... Uh, belong to John's gospel and it, it points out that Christ is eternally living word. But having said that now, Paul could have also been referring to the written word of God. So the words of Christ were being collected and they were being circulated by that time and, and Paul's own words were gathered uh, they were gathered into the Bible where, where he took them and uh, where they became the Word of God. And here as we look in the third chapter of Colossians, it focuses on, on Christian life. Uh, and already we, we've given attention to some things that, that should be removed from, as well as some things that must be added to the Christian life. And understanding all of that, is the fact that the Word of God should fill the Christian life. And so that brings up a question. Now what happens when God's Word dwells in you? Well, when first, first thing when God's will, uh, Word dwells in you, the first thing that it does is 
it enriches you. Uh, it becomes a, a part of life, and and then second, it gives richness to to your life. I heard about this atheist over in England, and he stood on one of England's great mill complexes there, where they were were working, and he would holler at the the workers and shake his fist at them and cuss them out and talking about all the errors and the inaccuracies of, of the Bible. You know, and I, I hear they always say all the inaccuracies and it contradicts itself. But I always challenge them to show me just one contradiction. I don't need a dozen, just show me one. And they can never find a contradiction. The Bible nowhere in there contradicts itself. And as, as this atheist stood there and he hollered at the workers and um, he challenged them and uh, talked about the inaccuracies and the myths and all the fables of the Bible and all of this. In that group there working, there was this one old man. He was uneducated. He could probably write his name. But he interrupted the, this atheist. And he said this. He said, you know, buddy, until recently, I was probably the world's greatest sinner. I was just like you, a pure idiot. I didn't know anything of what the Bible said. I always heard people say it says this, it says that, and it contradicts itself. And he said, I was a curse to myself to my family, and I, I was a curse to everybody that ever knew me. And then he said he heard the blessed account of, of Jesus, and he opened his heart to Jesus and accepted him as his Savior. And he said, you know, he said, after that, for the first time in my life, I really realized what happiness was. And, and I have been now a blessing to my family. Uh, my kids don't run and hide to, and try to stay away from me. So their whole home life is different. He said, I can just sum it up by saying that I am a new man and I have a new life and my family has a, a new life now. And then he asked us a question. He said, if the Bible really was false, so what happened to your soul? What happened to your heart? So what, what, what would bring you out of the depths of, of the mire and, and what set me up before the Lord with my foot on the rock? By that time, that day, just absolutely had no answer to anything this old man could, could ask him. And I thought about that. You know, how many times do we take it, the time to, to rebuke some, someone uh, in, a, in a loving way? Because you, you, you're not going to get anywhere with them if, by arguing. You just have to show them and, you know. But... That's the same as he had no answer at all to what this man was telling him. And when God's word dwells in you, it does something else. When God's word dwells in you, it educates you. you know, it brings all wisdom. And all this wisdom is to be taught. God can be taught as a means of instruction and living. That's what God's word is. It's, a, it's our instruction in living. I heard about two teenagers that grew up in Dallas. Both of them were rough, they were tough, and they were, they were troublesome in and out of trouble all of their lives. And that was a faithful Sunday school teacher at one church got one of the boys and started working with him and for over a year, 
we prayed for him and was trying to get him. Finally, he, he got him in there and um, started working with him and teaching him and uh, for a long time. But the other teacher, he felt like, I, I don't want that rascal in my class and disrupting and, uh, and the, his crazy ideas. And so the first boy got saved. And today, he is director of evangelism for a state convention of Southern Baptists. And the other boy? <laughs> The other boy is said to have been the assassin of President John Kennedy. Mm. You know, God's word can be taught through music. Amen. You know, some of the greatest teaching is in song. Amen. Yeah, victory in Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that amazing grace. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's not a song in the in the book that's not useful for, for teaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of our favorite theology is taught through the music we sing. The book of Psalms. The, the book of Psalms is just a treasure of, of music and uh, in poetry that tells us of all of God's demons and and with persons and, and uh, uh, peoples and their experience with God. And it, we can identify with it because they are just like us. And it admonishes us to uh, the proper belief as well as action. And it brings grace and truth into life. And then thirdly, when God's word dwells in you, it does one important thing. It encourages you. Yes. You know, as, as you go you, every day, you're encouraged. And uh, all things that Christians do are to be done in Christ's name. And it, not only is it to be done in his name, it's to be done by his authority. And this includes the things that we say, that uh, we do. All things that Christians do are to be done in gratitude to Jesus Christ. And when God's word dwells in you, it does something. It transforms you. It makes you into a new kind of person. The word of God cannot dwell in the same life where deceitfulness and sin and, and rebellion dwell. It's got to go if you read reading and studying God's Word. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us once again to the place where we could open your words for just a few moments and, and share it. And Father, we pray that as we go out tonight and through the coming days that you will place people in our lives that that they might see Jesus in us and that we might can share with them the good news that there is victory in Jesus. Grant it, Father, in Christ's name we thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.